Hi, I'm Mike from Phillips Hot Rods and Customs in downtown Pennsylvania. Today we're going to show you some tips and tricks on how to use the English wheel, a few ways you might not have thought of before, right down to making complicated shapes like this large reverse curve. Let's get started. There's three different ways you can use an English wheel. You can use it as a stretching machine, a planishing machine, and a forming machine. Let's talk a little bit about the stretching machine. Traditionally, you'd have a steel upper wheel, which is flat, and a crowned lower wheel. When you add the addition of a rubber band around the upper wheel, you could do some neat tricks. When you have the plain steel wheel, what happens is you will get shape in both dimensions. You will have crown this way, and you will have crown this way. When you do the addition of the rubber covering the upper die, you will get shape in the direction one way, the panel will remain flat in the opposite direction. It cancels out all front to back shape. We'll do a quick demonstration. What holds the crown in a panel is the tension around the edges. So when you wheel your panel, with a steel upper and a steel lower, what's happening is the panel will create shape and stretch side to side the same shape as the lower wheel. You will get less shape, but you will still get contour front to back. The more you wheel, the more stretch you're getting. Avoiding the edges makes the edges shorter. The center is now longer, and the metal has nowhere to go but to rise up. You can adjust the amount of tension and the pressure <clears throat> by screwing the lower wheel up tighter. You always want to track across the panel as tight as possible, having your marks overlap each other. If you skip any spots, your panel is going to get wavy. And in just a few seconds, you can see we're starting to gain crown in that direction, and we're gaining crown front to back, but it's a little bit less. If you wanted to get more crown in the middle, you would choose a pattern such as what I'm going to draw on here. So our first pass, we avoided the edge, and we gained crown within this box. If we want a continuous crown, to continue rising more and more towards the center, now we would take the wheel and we wheel in this box, and then we would only wheel in this box. And keep doing that so that the center is wheeled more and that the edges are wheeled less and less and less as you taper in. That'll give you a nice smooth crown all the way to the center. If you keep wheeling the center the same amount over and over and only avoiding the edges, you'll get a little bit of shape moving up in the center, but it's going to be even. If you want it to keep getting higher and higher and higher, you have to keep moving your pattern in tighter towards the center. Let's do that real fast. We're going to move into the next box. You want to try to start and stop in different spots every time, stop before the line, stop on the line, stop a little bit after the line. If you keep stopping right on the line, you'll form a ridge that you'll see in the shape when you're all done. Now we're going to move to the next box, and then the next box. You can see the strokes are getting shorter. Then you can wheel just the center. So in just a few seconds, we're getting a lot more shape now. The shape is consistent and even from edge to edge. And you can still see that we are wheeling in this direction. 
you'll notice that we have more shape this way than we do this way. If you wanted the shape the same both directions, you simply just turn the panel around and you can wheel the other way. This also is, helps get your panel more even. It's called a cross wheel. If your tracking pattern was a little sloppy, cross wheeling it helps pick up any spots that you missed. If you miss a spot, then basically that means that that area did not get stretched. That area is now shorter than the rest, and the tension of that area being too short causes that to be a low spot. That spot will actually suck down and look like a hollow. You can go back later with light pressure and try to stretch that one spot and wash that piece out. Try to even it out. So I'm doing each box twice. And just one more set of passes. You can see how much shape we're really starting to grow. Now it's a little more even in both directions because we cross wheeled it. The panel is also a lot smoother now that we've cross wheeled it. Any spots we may have missed by our tracking pattern being a little um, wavy, <clears throat> it'll pick up all those spots and smooth them all out. Now let's show what the addition of the rubber wheel does. A neat trick you can do is by covering your upper wheel with a rubber band, it cancels out all shape front to back and only shapes the panel side to side. You can store your rubber band on your wheel at all times by putting a block of wood or a block of metal on top of here and just stretch it out of the way. Then when you need it, you can just pop that out. Flip this down. Stretch it on. You want it to be nice and tight to your wheel so it doesn't slip when you're trying to use it. This rubber band is available through Eastwood. It fits their wheel nice and tight. To get this installed, try to keep it centered as best you can. All right. So once that's on, let's show you what it does. You want to track your pattern just like you would normally. Keep it nice and tight. Try to have your marks overlap the one before. This is a really nice trick to use if you're doing something such as a transmission tunnel. or if you want to create shape in something, but you want to keep it flat and you don't have a set of rollers, you don't have a large enough piece of pipe to form over. So you can see in less than 20 seconds, what we have is a ton of shape side to side. But front to back, the panel is still perfectly flat. You can even assist in making the panel move a little more by giving a little bit of downward pressure with your hand. Now that I'm halfway through, I'm putting pressure down on both sides. And now I'm putting more pressure down towards my left as the panel comes out. So in just two times through with the rubber wheel, you can see a huge amount of shape but the panel stayed flat. But just twice through there, we gained almost two inches of crown. The 
it's still flat in the other direction. You can also use the rubber wheel when you want to initiate curve into a panel, but you want to keep it flat at the same time. Pick a lower anvil that has the crown that fits the shape you're looking for. Start your panel in and use hand pressure to actually pull the panel down and roll back and forth across the area you want to turn the panel at. You can get that shape started but still keeping it flat at the same time. So it's flat but we got some curve started in the direction we wanted it that we could add more shape later. Using the English wheel as a planishing machine is when you'd want to get a lot of shape real fast and you don't want to use the wheel to just keep stretching, stretching, stretching. You can use a mountain sandbag. You can block the shape in by just hitting it as hard as you can, where you want to stretch it up the most, and then using the machine to planish out all that damage. Take your panel. If we want to get the center of this higher, put it upside down on the bag. Get a couple good hits on it. What we just did is we stretched the center of this panel up. We actually created area. All the spots that are hit are longer than the areas around. We can use the English wheel to planish out all the hammer marks and make this smooth again. To do that, you would use a steel bottom wheel with moderate tension. As you go across those hammer marks, they'll start feeling smoother and smoother. When you get to the point where you feel like there's not as much tension, because the damage is getting smoother, you can tighten up the pressure on the wheel. Going across it again. And again, as it starts feeling smoother and smoother, you're going to feel that you have less pressure on the panel. You can tighten it up more. What this is doing is it's planishing all that damage together. It's pushing metal around. It's pushing the highs into the lows, the lows into the highs. It's making it nice and smooth. Using it as a planishing machine in combination with a bag and mallet, you can see how much shape you can gain extremely quickly as opposed to using the wheel solely by itself to gain all that crown. After just a couple seconds through the wheel, the panel feels extremely smooth. You can't even tell where we hit it with the mallet. If we wanted to go more, we could continue stretching this area up, put the hammer marks in it, go back to the wheel, planish it out, and just repeat until you get the shape you want. The last way I like to use an English wheel is what I consider a forming machine. If I had a panel such as this where I had already shrank the corner down, I want both of these edges to be turned down at the same radius, but I want the panel to remain flat. I don't want any shape this way, but I want the panel to curve down that way and that way, starting on this line. I'll shrink the corner. Uh, you can tuck shrink, or I use a power hammer to get that corner, that corner shrunk down. And what I do, <clears throat> you want to pick the flattest wheel you have and light tension on the, on the upper wheel. I'll put the panel in there, and as I pull out, as soon as I get to that line where I want the panel to start turning, I use that lower die as a forming anvil to pull the panel down across, using the upper wheel to back it. You would track across the same way you would track, but since there's very, very little tension between the dies, we're not creating stretch. 
so we're not putting any crown. I'm pulling it down, shaping it across that lower die. Once we get closer to that corner, I'll have to change the lower die to a wheel that fits in that radius to blend the sides into the corner. You can see how that's forming over, but it's remaining flat. Let's do this side. So I got it to the point now where I need to change to a different radius lower die so I can blend this into here. This die is too flat. The corners would contact and leave dig marks as, since we don't have enough clearance. So let's change this to the highest crown wheel we have. Again, we're gonna bring it up, keep it pretty loose. We don't actually wanna pinch the panel because then we're gonna create stretch. That'll start putting crown and we don't wanna put any crown on it. And you want to keep it just tight enough you can feel a slight drag, but the wheel actually has the ability to slip. If you made the whole panel out of the, out of the highest crown wheel, your tracking pattern would actually have some pretty sharp dig marks in it. I call them railroad tracks. And they're very difficult to planish out later. But just there, within a few seconds, we managed to turn the edge down, around the corner, down this way, using the English wheel as a forming tool to pull over across the die. So we managed to keep the panel flat. We would then go in and continue to wheel this area here and planish this all together, get all these tooling marks out, get this nice and smooth. You could use this if you're making the top of a tank and you want to initiate the radius for the sides of the tank that you could then weld to and the top of your tank stays flat. And you can pull that down without having to use a hammer on a stake, without having to form over a large piece of pipe. You can just use your English wheel, light pressure, slip it out as soon as you get to your line put pressure and pull down. Use that as a forming anvil. So another neat trick you can do with the English wheel is you can use it to set body lines such as this. If you had to make a patch panel for this quarter panel or if you were going to make an entire quarter panel, first thing you would do is use the English wheel to put the crown on your panel. Even this quarter panel which looks fairly straight front to back, it does have some crown. There's no panel on any car that's 100% flat. So you'd use the English wheel to put your crown in the panel, just a little tiny bit, and you would tip the edge of the wheel up to set this line. We'll show you how that's done. So what you want to do is you want to find a lower anvil that fits the inside of your shape the best. We're not actually using the center of the wheel to shape on anymore. What we're going to do is use the edge of this wheel to tip the panel. So find a wheel that fits inside and the corners won't contact, just for clearance. Then you simply take a piece of sheet metal, some shim stock, anything that fits nicely underneath the edge of this wheel, and you're going to tip that edge up to rise this up to contact there. You're going to bring the wheel up, leave a little bit of clearance. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have the line that you're tipping drawn onto your panel. You're going to use that looking at the top edge of your upper wheel as your guide so you know where you're at. Put your panel in and then bring the wheel up. You don't want to wheel into the panel because you'll leave a dig mark. So get your panel set on your line, bring it up till you have light tension. 
You don't want to crank it real tight. We're not relying on tension here. We're not creating stretch. We're using the edge of the lower die to form over. So bring it up just enough that it's not a slip fit. It has a little bit of pressure, but you're not crushing it. Then you're going to use hand pressure to pull down across that bottom die as you wheel through. That hand pressure depicts how sharp of an angle you're going to get. If you want to tip it a lot, put a lot of pressure. You can always go back and do it again, so it's best to start slow. So I'm going to get down low and look at my mark. Get right on it. I got a little pressure down with my left hand. And I'm going to go right across that line, nice and even. Do a little more pressure. And something you can do is if you want the line to fade off, like you're a fading body line down the middle of a hood, right when you get to the end, just start putting less and less and less pressure and then fade off to no pressure. So you can see how we set that body line in the panel. We have a nice sharp line that I faded off to zero just by letting pressure off as I came through. We still have our shape front to back, but left our trim line right in a quarter panel or the peak of a hood. Now it's using nothing more than an English wheel and a shim stuck under one side of the wheel. Let's talk about how to make a complicated shape such as this reverse curve. So what makes it a reverse curve is that you have crown in this direction where a typical shape would have crown in this direction, but it's actually opposite. It's concave. The center of the panel sucked down in while still having shape this way. I'll show you how you create such a shape. These are common on cars from the late 30s to the early 50s. Uh, a good example would be like a 41 Willys between the fender and the grill where it comes down past the headlight. You'd have a reverse curve such as this, where you have the fender of the car, the nose of the car, but this comes down around past the grill area. Has that reverse. What creates that reverse is the tension in the panel. Normally you would wheel the whole panel up, you'd wheel more in the center, tapering less and less towards the edge, that gives you a bulbous shape, that gives you crown in both directions. When you want to create a reverse such as this, what you want to do is you actually want to avoid the center of the panel. The tension in the center of the panel being shorter than the edges of the panel, that sucks the panel down into a reverse. So let's set up a demonstration here. We have a piece that's 12 by 12. We're going to mark a two inch section down the center of this panel that we're going to avoid wheeling. What I like to do is I, I call that the no fly zone. We'll mark this out. So the center of this panel, we're not going to wheel. We're going to wheel the edges around it, and we're going to wheel more the further away we get. That'll give it a nice smooth contour. If we wheeled constantly to that line, we wouldn't have a smooth transition. So let's get started by wheeling the edges from the line out, and we'll see how much of a re reverse we get in one pass. So we're going to wheel this with a regular tracking pattern, keeping it nice and tight. I started right on that line, working my way across. Depending on the shape you're making, you might want to wheel one side more than the other. We're going to make this panel even side to side. So every time we, we wheel the one side, we're going to wheel the other side the same amount. Let's do two passes on each.
So just in a few seconds, we're starting to gain a little bit of crown here. And we're getting a little bit of crown here. A little bit of shape there and there. The center of the panel is just starting to come off on the edges of the, the roll and it's touching in the middle. So the reverse is starting. You can see when you lay it here, the roll is not touching in the center. The panel is just starting to suck underneath. Let's put a little bit more tension on the wheel and do a couple more passes. And go back in. That'll be two passes on this side. We'll go back and do one more on the other side. You can see that that reverse is starting to suck the panel down in the center. We're starting to get good crown on either side. You can also see that that reverse is starting to get the hollow. Let's do that one more time. Where I'm avoiding right now is the entire center. And we are still avoiding the edges. Avoiding the edges is what creates tension in the stretched zone. This area being stretched, the edges not being stretched, makes the edges shorter than the middle. The tension by the edges being held short, not letting the shape out, forces the panel to create crown. So we're creating crown here and here, and then we're also leaving the center of the panel short. That's what makes it have the reverse. Let's do one more time uh, in and back out in these zones, and then we're gonna make our box a little bit smaller and go from there. As always, you wanna make your starts and stops stagger on the line, before the line, after the line. This keeps you from getting that ridge in your panel from constantly stopping at the same spot. The reverse is really starting to come in. Now let's concentrate on making this transition a little bit smoother. We're going to move the no-fly zone in a little further so that this area will then be shorter than this area, which will then be shorter than this area. We'll keep moving it in. The center here is the shortest. We never wheeled from here to here. We have about six passes now here and we'll have more as we taper out. So that no fly zone is gonna keep getting wider and wider and wider. That'll keep this panel having a smoother transition instead of just sharply coming up. So now we're gonna keep these edges the same, but how far into the center we go is now gonna stop on this mark instead of this mark. We're gonna do that on both sides. The no-fly zone is getting wider and wider.
So we just did another pass with the no fly zone getting wider. That helps this transition stay smooth. You can see how much crown we're starting to get on the sides. You can see that reverse is probably about three eighths of an inch down. Let's do one more time with the no fly zone in the same location. You have to keep in mind at all times that as this panel starts to get more crown, make sure that your lower wheel still fits. If you start to get too much shape, you're going to have to move up to the next higher crown lower wheel for panel clearance. If you don't have the right wheel for panel clearance, the corners of the die will hit the panel before the center does. That will leave dig marks in the panel. You never want to have a wheel that's significantly too high of a crown because then the contact patch is too narrow. It will leave digs in the tracking marks. But you can't have one that's too flat because the corners will hit before the center hits. So always pick the wheel that fits the panel the best and as the panel creates more shape, keep changing wheels to a higher crown wheel. The wheel we have right now is still fitting nicely. We're going to move this no fly zone in one more time. We'll move it in about another half of an inch. So in less than five minutes time, we're really starting to develop this reverse curve. The more we wheel it, the more crown we will gain on these edges. That reverse will continue to suck into the panel. And the better job we do at tapering off the no fly zone, the smoother this transition will be. If you wanted this to come into a real tight reverse, you would have started out with a very narrow no fly zone and gone from there. If you want to sharpen up this no fly zone a little bit and accentuate it, that's another trick we can do with the rubber wheel. Let's try that now. I installed the rubber band on the upper wheel. We picked a crown lower wheel that fits this shape the best. We'll accentuate how deep this goes by using the rubber band. That's going to make the panel form side to side. It's not going to affect our shape or the bowl of our reverse. So for that we're going to use the panel upside down. Bring the wheel up, moderate tension. We're forming over it, we're not creating stretch. With the panel upside down, I'm going to apply a little bit of hand pressure on either side of the panel. And I'm going to wheel through that no fly zone. Upside down. Put a little bit more pressure on the wheel. By doing that, we just drove that center, that reverse, down in deeper. We probably gained another quarter inch to that reverse by using the rubber wheel, putting the panel upside down. What that did is it formed the panel over the lower die, pushing these down when the panel was flipped, making the reverse deeper. We'll go one more time. Again, hand pressure on both sides of the panel. Not a crazy amount. You can always go back and do it again.
doing so, we will lose a little bit of our front to back shape. But it will drive that reverse in much deeper and very fast. So that's the basic principles on how to make a reverse curve. The most important thing you need to know is to make the panel form a reverse. The center of the panel has to be shorter than the edges. The tension in the center of the panel causes the panel to curve over but suck underneath itself, making that reverse. The more you wheel the edges, the higher crown you'll get on the outside of that reverse. So I hope these tips and tricks helped you out. I'm Mike Phelps from Phelps Hot Rods and Customs. Check out eastwood.com. You can see all the tools we use today, such as this mount and sandbag. Also, this benchtop English wheel. We can also get the rubber band and the additional anvil set.